Well, look, we're excited because we know that God's work doesn't stop at just the grave and resurrection, mm -hmm. but his mission continues. Mm -hmm. And so last Sunday, uh, we were stirred by this idea. Here was the big idea from last week, that God doesn't run away from runaways. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Yeah. God yeah. doesn't yeah. run away from us. And so we want to remind you of that and reinforce that truth today. And I'm excited because we're going to do so in a very special way. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to unpack more scripture to affirm that truth that is running after your life today. Yeah. That is sent to remind you that God's character through the life of Jesus is always coming after each and every one of us. Us. In addition to that, we're going to do it in a special way because I'm excited. We have four amazing communicators today who are going to join me in proclaiming God's word. Each one of these individuals uh, is not only a member of our staff here at the church, but can I tell you something? I know they carry God's word in their heart and in their life. And so they're going to share with you from the depths of who they are. And I believe that you're going to be blessed. So here's what I want you to do. Three things, three things really quickly. Number one, I want you to grab a pen, grab a journal, grab a note section in your phone, lean in, open your ears, open your heart, because I believe you're going to hear something today in God's word and through all of these voices that is going to transform your life. In addition to that, I want you to do me another favor. I want you to make sure that you share this with somebody. They may be a friend that didn't make it last week, but needs to know that Jesus is coming after them today. Maybe you know a family member who couldn't make it to church, but you're like, man, I want you to check this out. Share it on your social media. Make sure you text somebody the link and say, hey, I'd love for you to plug in and check this out with me. Here's the last thing I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to open up your own heart. Maybe today you felt like the runaway. Maybe you felt like, man, my past and my present, maybe my mistakes or my challenges have made distance between me and God. Can I tell you something today? He's still running after you, and we're going to prove it in Scripture today. So would you bow with us as we open in a word of prayer, as we prepare our hearts for how God's word and God's truth is coming after us today. Lord, we pray that as we enter into this moment, that you would get the glory. Get the glory out of our words. Get the glory out of our time. Get the glory out of all that has transpired up until this point and all that will come after. Most importantly, God, would you reveal yourself through your words. Remind us of your character and that we might remember that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if you were coming after us then, you're coming after us now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We all say together, Amen. Hey, join us as we dive into God's Word. Amen. I'm excited to be here, and I hope that you're ready to hear from my fellow teammates here. Can you turn with me to Mark, the second chapter, and we're going to look at verse 15. Again, that's Mark, the second chapter, and we're going to look at verse 15. It says, Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. There were many people of this kind among Jesus's followers. I'm excited for this opportunity to share in God's word because I, I, I looked at that text and I saw myself. I saw you. I saw my family. I looked at this text and I got excited because there were a couple places where I could identify that Jesus's love was constantly chasing after us. First, in verse 15, we're talking about Levi, who just two verses earlier in 13 decided to follow Jesus. So no matter when you decided to follow him, know that he wants to pursue you right away. Yeah, yeah, Immediately yeah. after accepting Jesus, yeah. we see him with Jesus sitting at his dinner table. Yeah. The next thing that really got me excited was the dinner table. I'm not going to lie, guys. <laughs> it was the dinner table. I love to cook. I love to eat. I love to entertain people yeah. at my home. One of the things I really enjoy doing is grilling. Mm -hmm. And once I get a little pork chop, a little, uh, you know, a couple pieces of sausage, some steak, I really do it up on the grill. Some vegetables, of course, as well. <laughs> but I do it up on the grill. And afterwards, I take a nice picture for the gram. You know you can do it for the gram. I also make sure to send that to my family. And without fail, one of the things that always happen, somebody says, 
why did you cook so much food? Why did you grill so much? Because they know it's only my wife and two sons at home with me, but why did you cook so much food? And I have to let them know it's because I really enjoy cooking. I enjoy hosting people at my home. I enjoy sitting down with people over a meal. And that's exactly where we find Jesus in our text. He is sitting at a meal with people. And I, I, I've always pictured Jesus and his disciples as just him and the 12. Mm. But then this text highlighted something for me that really ex opened my mind to understand that it wasn't just Jesus mm. and the 12, yeah. it was Jesus and many other people. Yeah. And all of these other people were people like you and me. Yeah. See, it's easy to think of the religious context and say it was just Jesus, this man on a mission, Jesus, this man of miracles, this hopeful savior to, this, to, to the Jews and the redeemer of the Gentiles. But in fact, it wasn't just that, it was Jesus at the table with our text calls disreputable sinners. Yeah. That means people with a checkered past. Yeah. Somebody with a story to tell, maybe a few skeletons in the closet, some yeah. people who have some issues to deal with, yeah. some people who have sin in their lives and in their hearts, and in fact, other people even knew about yeah. it, yeah. right? It was the people that they called the tax collectors. And why were they important? Because these are the people who sometimes had to lie, cheat, and steal to yeah. do what they yeah. thought they had to lie, cheat, yes, and sir. steal to do what they needed to do. So he, here he is with liars, cheaters, stealers, and people with skeletons in the closet yeah. sitting at the table with Jesus. That changed my whole perspective about what Jesus really came to accomplish. Mm. He came to sit at a table with common people. Yeah. yeah. He came to sit at a table with ordinary people. He came to sit at a table with people who needed healing yeah. and saving, and they needed a savior. I want to let you know today that Jesus is the most comfortable mm. with people who don't have it all together. Yeah. He's so comfortable with people who don't cross all their T's and dot all their I's. Yeah. So I don't need you to get nervous when you come to church or when you watch online to then ask yourself questions about, is God for me? Is Jesus for me? He's exactly for you. Mm. He's for somebody just like you, somebody just like me, somebody with a little bit of a story mm. to tell. Jesus's character is one of love. Mm. And I'm excited that he doesn't run away from runaways yeah. because so many of us yeah. were runaways. Even if you were in the church, you might've still been oh, a runaway. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's gonna say amen to that, but Jesus <laughs> still, cares about the runaways. And I'm excited because Jesus solidifies us in verse 17, really who he's, who he's here for. Jesus said unto them, healthy people don't need a doctor. Yeah. Sick people do. Yeah. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, mm. but those who know they're sinners. Yeah. If you think you're righteous, Jesus is not for you. But if you know that at some point you are a sinner, mm. then Jesus is for you. In fact, if you know every day you're capable of sinning, if you know every day you're capable of falling and falling out of God's grace, then that's who Jesus mm. is looking for. He's looking for you. Keep yourselves in a place where you know that without God, I'm nothing. Yeah. Mm. Without God, I'm sick and I need Jesus. The position that Christ sits in is for those who were sick. He came to lift up those who were low. He came to restore the people he's recovered. He mm. came to heal those who are hurting. Yeah. He came mm. to love who the world would consider the least. And he came to love who the world would consider the lost. And matter of fact, even if you feel left out, yeah. know that Jesus yeah. came to sit with you. No matter who you are or what you've done, know that you aren't left out of who Jesus wants to pour some mm, love on. Yeah. He wants to sit with you. He wants to walk with you. Yeah. He wants to talk with you. Jesus yeah. is here for those with a past. Yeah. He loves you. Don't forget that. Sit and walk with Jesus. Mm. Amen. 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 Family, I'm so glad that we serve a God who is for us no matter what. Guys, I am excited to be reading from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. And I'm here for a short period of time, but I want to read through this whole entire yeah. passage. It is so good. And it starts at night, chapter 19, verse 1. It says, He, Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through. Mm. There was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Mm -hmm. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was not able because of the crowd. Yeah. since he was a short man. So running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree. And there, when he, he, he climbed up a sycamore tree because he knew Jesus was passing that way. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up to him and said, Zacchaeus, 
hurry and come down because today it is necessary for me to stay at your house. So quickly he came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who saw it began to complain. He's gone to stay with the sinful man. Yeah. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor Lord. And if I have exhorted anything from anyone, I'll pay back four times as much. Mm -hmm. Today, Salvation has come to this house yes. because he too is a son of Abraham yeah. for the son of man has come to seek and save the lost yes. family. I don't know about you. Um, I don't know if you've ever lost your keys before, but um, <laughs> I have actually, I, I lose my keys a lot and my family, my friends, they're probably watching. They can attest to this. I lose my keys all the time. And it's like at that moment when I lose my keys, what I thought was about to be a normal day has now turned into a game of hide and seek. Now, now, now I'm looking for my keys. Um, and so then it's even worse as if I wasn't already about to be late to the thing that I'm going to. Now what I was preparing to go do, I have to stop and I have to start looking for what I need in order to go where I'm going. All right. So in this text, we see Jesus is preparing to go somewhere mm -hmm. and not just anywhere. Jesus is on the way to his triumphal entry. Yeah. Jesus is on the way to Calvary. Yeah. But before he gets there, he's looking for something. He's mm. looking for someone. And I know the passage, it starts off by stating that Jesus was passing through the town. But can I be honest with you? I believe that Jesus didn't just pass through Jericho, but he was going through that town because he was looking for Zacchaeus. Yeah. 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 I believe that this was no accident or wow. coincidence. Coincidence, and I'm convinced of this because when Jesus found him, he called him by name. Yes. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. He was a man who was hated by many. He was a sinner, mm -hmm. but he was valued by Jesus. Come on, yeah. come on. Jesus wanted to find the sinner. Yeah. Jesus wanted to stay with the sinner. And when I, when I read this, I thought about me, yeah, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm honest, I thought about me, that Jesus isn't just looking for everybody who's perfect. He wants to look for a sinner. Yeah. He wants to find the sinner. He wants to be with you. In the same way that Jesus felt about Zacchaeus, he feels about us. Mm -hmm. And many mm -hmm. have labeled you, many have called you a sinner or deemed you unworthy. But can I tell you today that don't allow the fear of what people are calling, calling you and trying to label, it, mm. label you as keep you from what God God is calling Amen. you Amen. to. Yeah. Amen. Jesus wanted to come into Zacchaeus' home. He wanted to come into his mess. He wanted to come into his dysfunction, and he wants to do the same with you. Yes. But yes. when I was reading, I realized Jesus wasn't the only one looking for something. Zacchaeus wanted to see the man that he had heard about. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus was hidden to him, but not because the Son of Man was hiding himself, but what was around Zacchaeus prevented him from seeing from seeing Jesus. Yeah. His condition prevented him from seeing Jesus. Come Remember, on, yeah. Zacchaeus, he was a small man. Yeah. He was a small man. Yeah. So he's in a crowd amongst a bunch of people and he can't see Jesus. But I love this. Zacchaeus said, I'm not going to stop here. Yeah. I can't stay where I'm at. I got to see this man. Yeah. I've heard a man that's coming to town and I want to see him. Yeah. So I'm going to do what I have to do to see the son of man. And so Zacchaeus, he goes and he climbs up a sycamore tree. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to do something that looks a little childish. Yeah. Sometimes you got to yeah. get in a different Come position on. to to find God Come and on. he gets in a sycamore tree. And I just love this because when we see him do this, Jesus sees Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to position yourself for the Lord. Sometimes you got to change where you're standing yeah. so you Shoo. can see Jesus. Yeah. Zacchaeus said, I'm not staying where I'm at. I saw a man. I heard about a man. I heard a man calling for me. I got to go see Jesus. I need to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today you may have heard this story and thought, this sounds good, see? But if I'm honest, I didn't just take money from people like a chief tax collector. My story is too messy. Mm -hmm. I've done too much. I've gone too far way too many times. And you have thought you've disqualified yourself from Jesus wanting to come and be in your house. Help us. But can I tell you today that Jesus didn't just go find Zacchaeus. Yeah. Jesus found me too. Mm -hmm. And Jesus wants to find you. And he doesn't just want to find you. He wants to stay with you. Yes, Lord. He wants to be in relationship with you. So today, know that the Son of Man is looking for you. He's not just looking for you. He wants to stay with you. And he's not waiting for you to get it all together. It, it says today. Mm. Today. So just how you are. Yes. Right now, where you are with your circumstance, with all the things, with yeah. all the mess, Come with on. all the sin, yeah. right now, yeah. today, right where you are. Mm. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. Amen. Amen. What a word. What a word.
And I just love how the Lord has it where he shows us multiple times throughout scripture how he is searching for us. I'm going to be um, sharing with you from the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. And it reads, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose you had a hundred sheep and you lose one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the loss until he finds it? Mm. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. And then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me, yeah. I have found my lost sheep. Yeah. I tell you that in the same way, this will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Yeah. So the thought that I come with today in regards to this parable is that God is in search of you. Mm -hmm. Throughout scripture, we see that uh, sheep are often referenced, whether it's sacrificially, um, also as a primary source of income, yeah. but also symbolically as God's people. Yeah. Now, one might say, why would we be compared to sheep? But really, it's because oftentimes the behavior of sheep is very similar to our very own. Yeah. Come on, help us. Um, what we see is that naturally a sheep's only chance of survival is with the flock under the care of a competent shepherd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But also we find that they often can become overconfident, mm. rebellious, mm. or distracted. Help us. And they help wander us. away in search of greener pastures or they fail to notice when the flock has moved away. Yeah. And likewise, we also find ourselves in this predicament. Yeah. And when we finally realize that we are now lost and alone, we are far from where we even intended to be. Mm -hmm. uh, when I think about this story, I said, you know, how does this apply to uh, my own life? You know, how have I experienced this in some way? And I, I came across a very unique perspective. Um, I remember when I was seven years old and um, I was on a shopping trip with my mom and my siblings. So there's four of us. I have an older sister, older brother, then there's me, and then I have a younger brother. And this trip was very normal. We would often go with my mom with the old adage, don't touch anything, don't <laughs> ask for anything, um, and stay together. And for the most part, we had stuck to that up until the last point of the trip at the checkout line. Mm. So we all began helping mom put everything on the conveyor belt and get everything up to the register, and we became distracted. Mm. And in that slight moment, when my mom looked up to account for all of us, she realized that my younger brother was missing. Mm -hmm. Now he was about four years old at this time. And so my mom began frantically asking us where he was and she began searching for him throughout the store. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Walmart security, yes, Walmart has security back then, <laughs> um, asked her what was going on and she explained to them that her child was lost. Mm -hmm. And she began looking for him everywhere and she left the, the remaining three of us at the front of the store while she looked for my brother. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, within minutes, uh, one of the security guards came rushing from the back of the store with my brother in hand and said, is this your son? Yeah. And immediately, my mom screamed yes and grabbed my brother. Come on, come and it on. seemed as if she held onto him forever. But as we reunited, the whole store began to cheer that she had found her son. <laughs> wow. And what I found out of this trip was that really, there was no hesitation from my mom to begin asking and yeah. frantically looking for her son. Yeah. And it was no doubt that she would have to leave us behind in order to find him. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what we later learned in this, in this moment was that my brother had actually decided on his own to walk away in search of my dad. Mm -hmm. So he didn't realize he was lost. Mm -hmm. And when I asked my mom about this experience, she Come said on. she recalls the scary feeling of not knowing where her child was mm -hmm. and how she never wanted to feel that feeling again. Yes. Wow. But then I had to bring it back to what my perspective of this moment was. And as I recall, I never questioned why my mom left the three of us in search for my brother, mm -hmm. nor did I question her love for us. Mm -hmm. But rather, I witnessed the amazing love she had for each and every one of us. That despite having three children remaining, that one 
that one that was lost was not enough. Yeah. Each one of us was a value to her and each of us had a place in her heart. Yeah. So she could not live with the thought of us being alone, yeah. lost mm. or abandoned. Yeah. And whether we were truly lost or had chosen to walk away on our own, it was in yeah. her nature and mm. nurture as a loving mother to desperately search for him yeah. and yeah. rejoice over him when he was found. Yeah. 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 In the same way, this scripture shows us that Jesus is this way. Yes. Whether we are lost or we have chosen to walk away on our own, he oh, never gosh. wants to experience losing us. Mm. Despite having 99 remaining, that mm. is not enough. Each oh, one of us goodness. has value. Each of us has a place in his heart and he cannot live without the thought of us being lost, alone, and abandoned. Yeah. So in his loving nature as a father, he desperately searches for us yes. and rejoices yes. over us when we yes. are found. So I encourage you today, yes. if you feel lost, mm. or you have even chosen to walk away from God on oh, your own, yeah. God is searching for you mm. yeah. and will not stop until you are found in Him. Yeah. Maybe this message is a sign to you that God has been searching for you. Yeah. But know that no matter where you are or how far you think you've mm. gone, this is an opportunity to let Him know where you are and let Him lead you back to where you need to be. Mm. Wow. Um, right where you are, can you just put like some claps in the in, in the chats right now just to give it up uh, for such wonderful communicators and I, I love you all. Um, I get the wonderful opportunity today to share amongst these great communicators uh, and encourage you right where you are. If you can, could you open your Bibles to Luke 15 and 20, Luke 15 and 20. 20, and I'll be sharing about the prodigal son today. Uh, and it reads, And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. You know, uh, growing up, man, I came from a family that loves to tell stories. As a matter of fact, my grandmother was one of the greatest storytellers ever. And she always would have us around the table and she would tell these amazing stories, not just these fictional stories, but stories about my uncles. Mm -hmm. And she would say all the time, yeah, your uncle was over here and he was over there and he grew up. But she would end every story with like these amazing taglines. I'm pretty sure you probably know. She would say six in one hand, half a dozen in another. <laughs> right. <laughs> she would say something like uh, 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 birds of a feather. Yeah. Flock, flock together, together right? Uh -huh. And then she was also saying, hey, baby, I tell you one day there were two peas in a what? Pot. Uh -huh. Two peas in a pot. Now, I heard the story, and I used to just look at them for face value, but as I began to get older, I realized that those stories and those taglines nestled in them had a lot of truth. Mm -hmm. Just like today, when we look at parables really, really quick, parables are just simply stories. They are stories. And looking at the parable of the prodigal son, it highlights so many different things and it highlights so many different uh, principles that we can even live by. Uh, if you look at the parable of the prodigal son, it brings to center stage what love is personified. Yeah. You can clearly see uh, it shows nestled in there, 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, whispering so faintly as the father gazes at a son coming into the yeah. distance that love is patient, yeah. that love is kind, that yeah. love is enduring, Come that on. love sees no wrong. Yeah. In this parable of the prodigal son, you just don't see principles to live by, but deeply embedded in that they're not just principles, but they are powerful truths yeah. that bring us to a life that will forever be changed. Come Today, on. Come on. when we talk and when we speak, this is not just stories. This is literally the word yeah. of God. Come and so on. as I look at the prodigal son here and we jump in uh, to Luke uh, 15 and 20, what you're seeing is we're kind of coming to this capstone where you had a father, you had two sons, you had one son who absolutely left home. He said, look, give me my inheritance. In other words, dad, go somewhere and die. Give me what you work for. I want to take it. I'm going to leave. He leaves home. When he leaves home, he finds himself in a place where he spends all of his money. He, mm. he gets rid of everything that he has. He spends lavishly. He's super irresponsible and he finds himself in trouble. And now he comes and he's the lender and he ends up now being the borrower. Mm. He finds himself working for somebody else, living beneath his privilege, yeah. living beneath yeah. what his father yeah. has worked so hard, living beneath what his name really was. Yeah. And he found himself finally at a place where he was in pig slop. He was mm. eating what the pigs ate. Wow. And now he finally gets here and in this place, in this oh, place no. of contention, in this place now where he's like, look, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm lost. He comes to himself. The scripture says he comes to himself. When he comes yeah, to yeah. himself, he begins now to realize, wait a minute, 
this is not me. This is not what God has called me to be. This is not what my father has set out for yeah. me to do. And so when he comes to himself, he says, listen, I'm getting ready to go back home. Yeah. He said, I'm going back home. And he said, when I get there, I'll tell my father, I'll explain everything to him and I'll be able to serve him and he'll take me back just as I am. And this is where it picks up really, really quick. I want to share with you two quick things that I learned on the way back home. Yeah. Real quick, just two lessons I learned on the way back home. Way if back you home, look yeah. here in the scriptures, it says that uh, he got up and he went to his father. Right before that, if you look at the verses, it says that he began to recite in his head what he was going to tell his father. So he begins to come up with an explanation. But when he comes with this explanation, it says that as he approaches his father, his father now comes running to him. He didn't even have time to explain. Can I drop this on you real quick? You don't have to approve what's already been approved. Why, why, why are you trying to explain where you came from? God is saying, look, you don't have to explain what happened and where you came from and what is done. Why? Because I have already justified you. Right now, some of you are in a place right now where you've made mistakes over and over again, and you haven't come back home because you said, I don't have a good enough explanation. Oh, My yeah. story is not good enough. I'm not qualified to come. And God is saying, you don't have to approve because I have already approved you. Yeah. The next thing that I learned on the way home is, check this out real, real quick. You can jot this down. It's what you did, but it's not who you are. Yeah. Glory to God. I want you to know right now, whoever you are, I know you've done some crazy things. I know you messed up. Look at the text. It says that he left home. He took his inheritance. He squandered it. He lived doing whatever. He sold his work, his self uh, uh, for, for labor. I mean, all manner of things he did. But it says that on his way back home, his father runs to him. He embraces him and he never reminded him of what he did. Yeah. Why? Because his father knew that what he did didn't matter oh, because right. he was a son. Yeah. Can I speak to you really, really quick? Uh, son and daughter, I know you messed up. I know you did it. I know you lied. I know you cheated. All manner of things. But God is saying to you today, yes, you did it, but it's not who you are. Who are you? You are a son. You are a daughter of God. Yeah. You are above and not beneath. Yeah. I know I ain't say a lot, but I got to preach to you. Yeah. I'm going to encourage you real, real quick. That's why Jesus came. He came so that you can have life more abundantly. He came to pick up your mess. He came to pick up your shame. He yeah. came to pick up your trouble. Yeah. He came to pick up your confusion. He came to pick up everything that you are unsure about. He put it on the cross. He laid down in the grave, but he got up with all power in his head. Can I encourage you real, real quick? You need to stop worrying about what you did before because God said he already got your back. He's already justified you. He's already qualified you. God has a place for you. Yeah. Can I encourage you really, really quick? Yeah. There's more for you. Mm -hmm. Out of all of the parables, you see right before this, there are two parables. There's the lost coin. There's a the lost sheep. The shepherd goes find, finding the sheep. She goes find the coin. And this one, the father doesn't pursue the son. But can I tell you this? He's standing and anticipating the son to come back. Mm -hmm. Can you come back home? Yeah. Come back home. You always have a place at home. That's what I want to tell you. Come back home. Lay down everything. Come back home. Bring your troubles with you. Bring your pain. Bring your past. So come good. back so home where you belong. Yeah. I love you. Wow, come on, can we give God a hand clap of praise? Man. Right in the chat, I dare you to put the hand clap emojis. I am stirred, I'm excited. I hope that your heart is, feels, feels like mine right now that is so open to the truth yeah. that you. God has reminded us of through his word. Can I tell you what you just experienced? You didn't just hear four voices. You didn't just hear two genders. You didn't just hear multiple generations. What you heard was the timeless and eternal word of God Come coming after you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Listen to me. The truth that you have just heard is never ending, yes. which means it wasn't just written for them way back then. It was written for each and every one of us mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. So maybe you're the one today yeah. that feels like you haven't been invited to the table. And Curtis came along to remind you that you're invited. That, that you're the type of person that Jesus wants to eat with. Maybe Sierra reminded you today that maybe you feel like you've lost some things. Maybe oh, right. you feel like you haven't been seen. Maybe you feel like in this season you've had to do a little extra. But can I tell you something? It is not by accident that God is calling you by name today. Yeah, yes, yeah, Lord. Yeah. And he's not moving around you. He's coming for you. Yes. 
Maybe Yanina reminded you today that, that he cares about all of his children that are already in the church and they're singing the songs and they know the scriptures, but as much as he cares about them, guess yes. what? Come He's on. still running out after yes, you. Come on, sir. He's not only worried about those who made it into the building on Sunday, but he's also thinking about each and every one of you who may be watching this, feeling like I ain't been in church in a long time, and maybe I don't know all that they know. But he said, no, 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 you're still my child too. And he loves you. Maybe Gordon reminded you that you just needed to know that you can come back home. home. Yes, Lord. And he's standing. He's waiting. Can I tell you something else? Because we're Jesus followers, we're standing and waiting too. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That we're ready to receive you with open arms, that we're ready to love you with open hearts, that we know that you've been, had done some things and been some places, but we all have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is why we always say the church is not a bunch of perfect people. Yes. It's a bunch of imperfect people mm-hmm. who found a perfect God. Yes, Lord. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to close your eyes right where you are. We want to invite you to receive the best relationship you could ever have. Maybe you came last Sunday and last Saturday, and you said, man, I I know they told me that God loved me. I know they told me he doesn't run away from me. I know they told me he's coming after me. But but, but something along the course of the last six days caused that to wash away, caused me to forget that truth. But today, it came to remind you, to reinforce that truth. Maybe you said, I won't there for Easter weekend. I don't know what they said, but somebody told me. I needed to hear this word today. Maybe I just stumbled upon this, and maybe it was just what I needed to hear that I can come back home. We're going to pray this prayer. And no matter where you are, maybe you're in your car, maybe you're in your living room, maybe you're at your job in the cubicle, I want you to pray this prayer with us as you receive and invite Jesus into your heart and most importantly into your life. Thank you, Because I promise you, he's ready to welcome you home. Yes, sir. Would you pray this prayer with me? We say, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my my mind. I give you my my life. life. From this day forward, forward, I commit my life to you. And I confirm confirm that I believe in your son, Jesus, Jesus, who died for our sins sins and rose for my freedom. freedom. This day forward, forward, I am saved. saved. In Jesus' name, name. Amen. amen.